Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes And yeah, that's it I'm going to make this recording Upload it and then I'm going to go to bed myself. My sleep patterns changed. Not through choice, because I quite like being up at night. But for some reason I've just been going to bed a bit earlier. At last I was really weird. <sighs> I was in bed. Yeah, I, was, I went to bed at half eight in the evening, just for a little sleep. Woke up at one. I had something to eat, and I went back to bed till about nine in the morning. It's really strange. It's it's unlike me to sleep like that. It's. Uh, Never mind. I had the opposite problem of getting to sleep. It's more, I sleep probably too much sometimes. You know, what it might be is I'm listening to my own thoughts and they're boring me. So I just end up falling asleep and then I wake up. And I start thinking again, and I start listening to my thoughts, and I fall back asleep again because I'm so boring. Right, a couple of things. <sighs> Hope that everybody has um, got through the Christmas okay, all the listeners. I say that in a, a different way. It's based on not just my personal experience, but based on what I've seen on Facebook. Um, some of my Facebook friends have been struggling. So um, I hope that you're all okay and you're, you know. Christmas is now done and we can all sort of get on with the new year that's coming new year, new start that's what I I know it's a cliche but I always think that every year I've, I've not really sort of in my heart celebrated Christmas since 2000 and probably 15 no 2000 yeah, 1985 1984 that's probably the last time that I had a family you know where my family and my brothers and was all there so probably about 1984 85 ish time and uh, since then I've kind of just gone along with it but, you know, my heart's not really being in it. Not really. And it's... The society kind of... It's kind of... It's very forceful. It's a very forced thing. Um, but at the same time, it's also a beautiful thing. For those that do celebrate it. And, you know, it's it can be one of the happiest times of the year. So, you know, I keep... Um, I try and keep upbeat you know with the whole thing uh, when I'm with people that do celebrate it just in the same way as if someone mentions a TV show that they love watching and I don't put down the TV show I don't be negative towards it because that's something that they love because I know it's it's you know I've had that with me but sort of being with a friend so oh, I'm going to go and watch the I get home to watch The X Factor and then I'll go into or Big Brother or whatever it might have been that I was watching 
and they're going, oh, you watch that crap. <laughs> Actually, that's that was a painful experience. I really didn't enjoy that conversation, and I really don't like that person right now, <laughs> at the moment. It's it's so I try not to do that with other people, and so I kind of I try not to. If someone likes mu- a certain music, someone likes a certain TV program. I don't watch it myself. I'm not going to go into a big about it because it's unpleasant for them. Unless, of course, I don't like them. Then, <laughs> then I'd, I, even if I like the program, I'd say I don't because I'm evil. <laughs> but I know. I uh, hope that everyone's got through the seasonal time. See, I'm I'm pretty much a Buddhist, so this isn't my festival, you know, from a religious ex- from a religious perspective. And there's a lot of people that aren't uh, that don't celebrate Christmas as a festival, as a, like a religious thing. I'd say pretty most people actually, but. Because uh, more of a traditional thing, but it does there's still that pressure. So if you're a Buddhist, there's still that pressure. Oh, you should celebrate Christmas. I bet you other religions don't get that. You know, well, you should celebrate Christmas. Well, no, but, but Buddhists, I think, this kind of well, go on. Can't you just celebrate it? Can't you just? <laughs> Just be, get involved a little bit. So what I do is I go and sit in a in a cave. God, can you imagine me sitting in a cave, being quiet, and not saying anything ever? No, that would just a vow of silence. That would just be the end of my life, wouldn't it? That'd be there'd be no purpose to me. If I couldn't just yabber on about nothing. Oh, what would I do? What would I do? So yeah, I'm not the greatest Buddhist in the world. I don't even I don't even know if I class myself as anything anymore. I'm just a I'm a, I'm a Jason. And that's what I am. I'm just a I'm just a Jason. And I've got the window open, so I'm hearing Hearing a bit of background sound outside, so hopefully nothing too interesting. Sounds like it might be a train or something in the background. Oh, um, I think, I think, I think I'm going to have to put a pause on the latest competition. And start it on New Year's Day for the whole of January. Two reasons. I can't really afford to do a competition every week. I just kind of dawned on me that this isn't really practical. Secondly, um, no one, <laughs> the new competition, because the, the first competition has been won. So that's done. The second competition, which was to share, anyone that shared any of my Facebook posts would be entered into the competition to win a disk drive, you know, a, you know the drive that you plug into a laptop or whatever, one of those with all of my Let Me Bore You to Sleep recordings on it. And I was just going to tally up and just basically every time someone shared one of my posts over the next week would be entered. Well, it's a few days into it. Was it Christmas Day? Thursday? Friday? And 
there's been maybe two people have shared and it's I think because it's Christmas people are just so busy you know a lot of people are very busy at Christmas with family and travelling and whatever else or trying to avoid it um, or get caught up you know, they're just doing other things if they're on holiday or so for those I suppose I should post this on Facebook as well the in a written form which I will <sighs> but I will start it might be a different competition so I'm going to wait so if you still want to post I, I appreciate you posting this and my, you know, re-sharing my posts on Facebook anyway, just to sort of help out, spread the word. Um, but there's going to be a different competition. It will be for the the. I don't know what you call it. A disc, the disc thing, USB stick. You know, the thing that has all the a file with. Uh, all of the Let Me Bore You To Sleep recordings that will still be the prize and that will be for the whole of January 2020 starting on New Year's Day so I know that the two people probably at least the person that and you know who you are <laughs> and you, I bet you're smiling right now as I say this the person that is already way ahead in um, sharing my posts on Facebook. Uh, although being, it doesn't mean you're going to win because you share, you can share every single one of them. But someone else that might share three might still be the one that gets picked out. You know, there's no way of knowing. But obviously the more you've got in there, the more chance of winning. Um so I hope you're okay with that but this is the same person that won last the the competition um, before so uh, and you know you've, she's been sharing my posts for a while now and it's just it was really weird because as we I put my stuff into this it's, it's basically it was I made little pieces of paper save you watching the video because the video quality wasn't very good it was crackling as I was listening to it and I didn't realise and it was the that's the Facebook portal so I'm not 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 crazily happy about that if I'm honest I mean I thought it was I was hoping to perhaps use it to do some sessions you know maybe do some streaming and stuff but if it's going to be all crackly and crappy uh, volume or really bad audio then I, I don't want to do it a picture was okay ish even the picture wasn't great I just figured it would be the same level of quality as the phone doing it on a phone if it's actually made by Facebook for Facebook you know what I mean if it's specifically for that in order to I mean maybe doing a one to one chat it would be clearer because that's what it was originally made for and the they've added the app so that you can do live broadcasts because that's what the customers were asking for and the Facebook portal, as far as I'm aware, it wasn't selling as well because that's what a lot of people wanted to be able to do. So if you look online, and I, which I did, I looked at lots of reviews for the Facebook portal. And most of the reviews talk about how it doesn't offer that option. So it's a new option that's on there so maybe it just needs a bit of tweaking and they'll update it and make it clearer perhaps um, yeah so 
oh yes, I, I, tie, I made these little pieces of paper with everyone's names in them and then I put them inside my headphone case, shook it and then unzipped it and I got Andre to knock out um, I didn't really know what he was, I thought he might ho hopefully bite one but he didn't, he knocked knocked one out onto the keyboard knocked one out <laughs> <laughs> So he knocked one one of the pieces of paper off onto the keyboard of the laptop and then he knocked another piece off which was so the one he knocked off me was further away from me so I picked that up you know it was only two pieces I picked up the one that he knocked off first and it was you know how it turned out and I also showed the runner up who don't get nothing but um <laughs> just, it's a bit rubbish, isn't it? And the runner-up is Paula, and you get nothing. <laughs> she got a mention. She got. I don't know who it was. I forget. <laughs> was so amateurish the way I did the competition it was ridiculous <laughs> seriously I reckon a six year old child could have probably put put it together better than me could have found a, a, like a better way to actually present it it was just awful but it's okay we did it um, <laughs> but I think that's part of the charm part of the charm because let's face it how many competitions or competition winners are chosen by a ferret? I mean, that's that's a special thing, isn't it? I think it is. And he is the star of the show. Let's face it. If this was a video and Andre was with me, you'd be focusing on him, not on me, and you wouldn't be focusing on what I was saying. You'd be focusing on him. Because he's so darn cute. Especially with his big yawns he does. But, um... I love the way he rubs himself against my beard. That's part of the reason why I grow my beard back. Because even when I trim it down and get it down to... Well, you know, shorter. He like stubbly kind of length, and he doesn't rub himself against my face as much. But when I let my beard get bigger, like at the moment, it's it's now a beard. It's not a big bushy, permy beard. You know, Grizzly Adams. That's for all you old people out there. Grizzly Adams, not one of those Grizzly Adams he beard. God, he's a beautiful man, wasn't he? Wasn't he a beautiful... He <laughs> he's really weird. I'm totally straight. Absolutely got no interest in men, really, at all. I say really, at all. I've got not... But I can... When I see... I can. Some people are just beautiful. And I think the reason behind it is... He looked very similar to my maths teacher when I was in the first year of high school. And he was the only teacher that was ever nice to me. Well, okay, no, it's not right. There were two teachers that were nice to me. Him 
those three teachers but the two RE teachers religious education teachers both of those were nice to me but out of all the other other classes I did Mr Johnson I think his name was he was the only nice teacher but he was lovely he had a big beard a big friendly face it was I suppose quite a big bloke as well I, I don't know I didn't weigh him never tried to lift him up to see what he you know but I, but I, he, was a, he was a man I don't know but he was lovely he was really friendly and he actually took time with me to I'm not sure if he explained anything but he told me that I felt safe with him that makes sense I didn't I didn't feel inferior I didn't because mathematics wasn't something that I was I struggled I really struggled with it I really really did and I gave up I don't know why I just I just struggled and I really difficult I had difficulty with it um, but he kind of was gentle with me and that was nice but uh, then he, yeah, he he got ill or something and he stopped working. He, I think he retired, medically retired. So I only had him for about one term. And then I got moved to the dunces class. Because of my behaviour after that. And... Yeah, so I don't think it wasn't actually called, I think it was the remedial class they called it. I don't know, but basically the kids that misbehaved and the kids that refused to work and the kids that were classed as thick or dunces were all put into this class where basically it was this big room. So I even remember the, the outlay, so... If you go out of the maths room that I was in, turn right, walk past about two classrooms, turn right again, up the stairs, round, and the first classroom on the right, that is the uh, that was the room. And it was a big room, had toys in it, and and we used to just play and just mess around and do very little just and I think that's probably my favourite class that and religious uh, studies or religious education which is weird because I don't know I think maybe there was a, there was a bit of familiarity because I haven't lived with nuns Catholic nuns for couple of years or whatever I suppose I felt a little bit of familiarity with the religious -y stuff and maybe that's how I, why I went back into Buddhism and got really involved in that and was involved with that from the age of about 20 when I started reading Buddhist books and really deeply involved in Christianity when I was at high school really got into the Bible the New Testament I mean proper um, not going to church but just studying it just really studying it like living my life through it it was quite weird I was only what 12 so or 11 or 12 so it's a went through a weird period but yeah so it's other than that But yeah, that kind of beard. That's what I was talking about, the beard. Um, what's his name? Smokey Adams? Not Smokey Adams. Rusty. Rusty Stick. Not Rusty Stick. Rusty Adams. Boney. Boney M. Boney. Boney Stick. Stick up a bum. I don't know. What was his name? 
Grizzly Adams. Grizzly Adams, yeah. How ironic, though. His name was Grizzly Adams, and he ended up meeting a grizzly bear. Because see, coincidence is everywhere, isn't there? And I used to love that show when I was, you know, young. Because it was on, I think, early 80s. I don't know, but it might have been earlier than that. But I think it was early 80s, maybe late 70s. And I think it was on around the same kind of time as like, the Bionic Man and possibly Little House on the Prairie. But that might have been earlier. The Waltons. Again, that might have been earlier. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Because we used to have the shows on in England. But uh, they might have... Some of the shows had already been in America. Like, and we got them a few years later. And one of the things... Oh, God, this is going to make you giggle like a... Like a... Uh, I don't know. Something that's being tickled. It's going to... doesn't happen so much now. But it did. It really did. Before the internet, it's, it's, it's literally, I don't know why, I think it's, it's almost like we're, we've synced with America now. We're kind of in tune with each other a bit more. But 20 odd years ago, well it's not even that long ago, but in the past, we used to get the sitcoms from America, the TV shows from America, we used to get their or your, if you're listening in America, your Christmas editions of the TV shows in the summer. We'd be so far behind your releases, so you'd, you'd release a TV show, and we wouldn't get it for six months or a year or something. But now, it seems that when TV shows released, it's kind of released here the same day or maybe the next day after it's been released in America. So we're more kind of jogging along each along each other, but side by side rather than trying to hang on to your tail. If if you had a tail. I wonder if humans really did used to have tails. This whole idea, the idea that we've got tailbone because we used to have tails. Uh, I don't know if I believe that. Uh, it's one of those things, isn't it? E e I was just thinking... You know the idea of being of conspiracies is that kind of that 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 want that need to not be gullible, isn't it? So you, to not just believe anything and to you know to not be gullible. And I think that's at the root of the need for people that embrace conspiracy theories because they don't want to be known as being gullible. Yet isn't it ironic how conspiracy theorists are the most gullible people? I don't know, I find it hum kind of humorous that they believe, they don't want to believe stuff that, that seems almost likely to be true. They want to believe something that is almost impossible to be true. Even though it might be true. You have to sensationalise everything. Oh, it's got to be some big dramatic thing. That's it. That's all I was saying on that one. I just found it interesting that the people that don't want to be gullible are the most gullible. I 
imagine having a conversation with someone and everything's conspiracy. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, come on. Let's talk some more. Oh, I enjoyed that conversation so much. So, right, the moon landings weren't real. Uh, okay, yeah. Great. Well, that, that six hour conversation about how it was all set up and it was too perfect and um, how come, you know, they put a man on the moon in 1969, but, you know, I didn't get a calculator that worked until 1981. You know, it's like, okay. We'll just uh, I'll stick you in the diary for our next conversation. What would you like to talk about? <laughs> uh, what, Kennedy? Uh, what, what, space shuttles? Uh, what else? Uh, uh, just, it's limitless, isn't it? What, the Vatican? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. Uh, I've spoken to people in the past. They said, well, you know that uh, we could use uh, the government uh, discovered how to use water to, to power cars 50 years ago, but they wanted to wanted to sell petrol and gas. They want to keep everyone reliant on gas and petrol. Ooh, ooh, all we had to do was put water in it. All we needed was a watering can. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it might be true. I don't care. I just find it funny that people get angry about stuff like that. Ooh. <laughs> and people say in this country, oh, it's like a dictatorship now, yeah. It's like a dictatorship. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. It's people that would say something like that about England. Like, dict like dictatorship. If it was a dictatorship, I would not be able to do this. That's the end of that story. That's the end. That's just, you know, it's, oh, really? Yeah, England. Oh, that Boris Johnson's such a dictator. God, oh, always telling us what to do. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, God. I'd probably be working in some kind of work camp if I was living under dictatorship. To be fair, I suppose in some places I'd probably be exterminated, wouldn't I? If I'd mentally ill, not contributing to society, 50 years old nearly. Yeah, I'd probably, yeah, there's probably some places, part of the world, where I'd just be snuffed out has <laughs> just got rid of well he's not contributing is he he's not really although I do talk to my psychiatrist my psychologist about this and I do I am contributing aren't I I'm just not contributing to my local society I'm contributing to the world society in a kind of a way by Mocking, <laughs> mocking people's views and opinions and belief systems. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not mocking anything. I'm just in a silly mood. <laughs> I'm in a silly mood. It happens sometimes. So what I thought I would do is over the next few days. Today being buff. I don't know what day it is. I honestly don't. I think it's Friday. I think. Um, did I nearly say a naughty swear word there, didn't I? I didn't say it though. I don't think so. For Friday. Um, I think it's or Saturday now. I don't know. It's one of them. So basically between now and New Year's Day... Or New Year's Eve 
I'm going to do a review of my year. So do a review of 2019. Now the main thing is I've got to try and think of something that's happened <laughs> during 2019 where I was involved in that particular activity. And I can't think of anything off the top of my toes. I think, well, what did I do? Let's just start off the year. I do it like a like a a rough outline. This would be like the the rough the rough outline of the of the sketch that will end up being a beautiful portrait of a little pony holding an umbrella with a carrot a bits bum. So I'm gonna. What did January hold? What did, did, did there was no snow. There was no snow. Um, January. Oh, what happened to January? Anybody? I want to say January. What happened? I'm not going to talk about news stories because I can't remember anything um, particular. And I'm sure there's all this stuff happening, isn't there? But I want to focus on me because that's more that's more interesting to me. Uh, January. I don't recall doing anything at all. Um, I suppose I was. <sighs> Oh, actually, I saw the new year in with Edini, a hypnotist, a YouTube hypnotist and magician. I did an interview with him and I did it live on Facebook or YouTube, I don't remember. Facebook, I think. So that was my first thing of the year. And I was making these Let Me Bore You To Sleep recordings. I don't know how many I'd done by then. Because... I just don't. I don't know how many I've done. I don't know how many I've done already this year. I don't even know what number this is. But I'm not far off the 300 mark now. So I must have had over a hundred done, maybe a hundred and forty, maybe I don't know. It's just I'm not sure. And the new, because I, I just the November before, the November twenty first, I think it was, I'd opened a new podcast with Spreaker, and you know, added all my stuff to the different podcasts. And uh, which is part of just like old recordings plus it, the newer ones that I've added. So I'd, I'd seen it grow a little bit from December, grow a little bit more January, and each month it's grown. Um, the occasional month it goes down a little bit, but it grows. But if you look at now, Compared to the rest of the year, um, this month, December, I've had 59, yeah, just under 60,000 downloads th in this month, December. Um, compared, yeah, and there's still a few more days left. So I'll have 65, 62, 46. Yeah, probably 60, 65, 66,000. So that would be the top month of the whole year as far as um, downloads for the per month. So that would be interesting to see how that goes next year because, 
if it grows the way it's grown um, but I don't know it'd just be really cool to see how it does to see if I'm on at the very, at the very least I should be on 100,000 or 120,000 by a month by the end of next year I mean that's kind of the the least I'd expect really I'd expect it to go up by about 10,000 a month so that's but that's 120,000 added on to the 60,000 so that'd be 180,000 so even if it only goes up by 5,000 a month which is only a few hundred a day isn't it so yeah, it's it's it'd be. Uh, I mean, I'm interested. This it is boring to hear about it, but I know. Um, I'm actually interested to see how it goes, and also, my plan is to stick with what I'm doing now. So stick with the podcast, and never get rid of it might need a little bit of help in the future to keep it going financially but at the moment it's it's okay I've got it going it's, it's going to still keep going but you know uh, you never know what's going to happen around the corner and my website as well now that I've got video reviews on there and if you would like to leave a video review if you're still awake if you haven't already put one on there, if you already put one on there, um, only one per person, possibly, because they can get a little bit, um, let's do what you want, really, because I appreciate any words you've got to say. But uh, what you could do, if you wanted to leave a review, you could leave a video review of a particular recording on that page but if you haven't left a video review of my service then go to the review page on my website if you want to do that if you'd like to do that but the more video reviews the less likely I am to ever get rid of that website which means I'll just be keeping it forever because I don't want to lose I don't want to lose those video reviews. It's actually it means a lot to me, as well as the written reviews as well. So, yeah. So I've got the website. I've got the podcasts. I'm going to keep them the whole of next year. I've also just invested in another podcast. And the reason for this is because it transcribes the podcast episodes for me as part of its service, which saves me thousands and thousands of hours of work. So it's, it's costing me £16 a month for that podcast hosting so it's it's post po podcasts are hosted also shared online it's called jason newland's hypnosis recordings that's the podcast so it will be available on various you know podcast places as well so i will keep that going because over the next year and i can start to get together the recordings or you know the transcripts and see if I can get something out of them in the form of a book or at least the outline of a book or some content that I can add to also I can give a, an outline of the recording as well so I can say well in this recording I talked about wah, 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 like that you know I might not actually go wah 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 but give a little bit of uh, insight into some of the content so that 
because in the past I've actually had people contact me and say I really enjoyed that recording you did about the the weird suitcase made of poo or I don't know in you know can you tell me which recording that was and I've got no idea because I don't take any notes of what I've said I generally don't know what I've talked about even during this recording I, I just just talk and then it's done I don't give it any thought I don't plan it and I don't uh, you know I just I don't remember what I've said because it's it's not important it's just uh, me being boring. And it's different levels of boredom as well. I mean, sometimes I will get extra boring. You have to watch out for those ones because sometimes I really... I think the, some of the descriptions of a house that I've lived in, now that's extra boring. <laughs> really boring so the possibilities are endless I think what I might do and I, I thought about doing it last year in the summer and I think I'm going to do it this year and the reason why I didn't do it is because there's people about but I've, really, I've kind of figured out how I can do it so I'm going to walk through the field with Andre through the countryside and I'm going to tell you what I see just say oh just see another another dog poo there's a ditch on the left there's a bit of grass and just you know take you through the whole journey for you know, an hour or something and then whenever a dog walker or someone sort of walks by I'll just stop talking for the time that they're there and then I'll once they're gone I'll start talking again so I'll have to edit it when I get home and cut out those bits where there's just like nothing going on but yeah I think it might be well sometimes people do stop and chat so of course I'll edit that out as well because I'm not going to leave that into a recording. But that's that's part of the reason I didn't do it in the past because I thought, well, if I think I'm recording them while they're talking to me, I should let them know that I'm recording. But then they'll think I'm weird <laughs> because why am I walking down the street recording? But. There's a reason for it, you know. It's uh, uh, it is quite a difficult thing to explain. You know, someone says, "What do you do?" I say, "I may I, I bore people. I make boring podcasts, or I do sleep podcasts, or what I wanted to do is say I do." I make pain relief recordings and I've got millions of people listening but that never happened although I did I had a few few people who used to enjoy my pain stuff but the sleep stuff that's the yeah that's the gift the gift of being boring and It is interesting that even on Facebook, people that know what I do still post that oh, I can't sleep and I'm not doing. You know, and they don't. They don't even think about listening to me. Some of them, which is a shame because these recordings really are boring. There's no doubt about that. It's really boring. And the more you listen, the more you get used to that feeling of just... Uh, 
almost like melting, you know, your body just melting into the bed. Andre is making, I wonder what Andre's doing, he's just being, Andre's just being Andre. Well, Daddy's talking now, so I've got to run around and make noise. Look at me, Daddy. Look, I'm going to run around now. I'm going to scratch at the carpet. I'm going to, going to have something to eat. Now, there's no food in there. Why is there no food in my bowl? So I cut his fingernails. Now he's just staring at me. Now he's going to bed. The um, he does this thing. If he goes to eat and there's nothing in the bowl, he'll stare at me. And if staring at me doesn't do anything. He starts moving the bowl with his nose. He pushes the bowl over, makes it clatter, and then stares at me. Sometimes he'll lay down next to the bowl and just look at me cutely. But if he doesn't get his own way, he starts to bang the bowl. Sometimes it will knock the bowl so it's on top of the other bowl, which has got his dry food in. <laughs> it's just it's almost to say, I'm not touching the dry food. I want the wet food. I want my cat food. Or well, he doesn't know it's cat food, but he, you know, he thinks it's his food. And he seems to like it. He likes the gravy. A big fan of the gravy. Even with the other cheap stuff I got, he liked the gravy, but he wouldn't eat the actual food. He just licked the gravy up. So he'd lick the bowl out, and uh, um, I don't know what he's doing now. So January, what happened January? I can't remember anything. What happened February? Nothing. Something much ha must have happened in March. No, nothing happened in March. What about April? Oh, something did happen in January. I went and visited my niece in hospital in January that was at the beginning of January and then I got gastroenteritis so yeah that was uh, uh, a week of uh, fun February don't remember much really happening March, nope, April, nope, don't remember anything, May, nope, June, I think I, nope, nope. April, June, July. No, I don't think anything happened in July. August, it was my birthday. Andre is biting through the thing, trying to get to me through the bottom of the chair. So I had my birthday in August. So I turned 49. So that was a, a lovely little adventure. And I wonder if biting my, f my fingers through the... I put my finger... 
<laughs> he's trying to get to me because now the chair is like half this chair is in, in it's kind of in pieces it's falling apart and he's now taking full advantage of that and he's he's tearing it apart now like literally as we speak he's pulling the stuffing out of the pillow or out of the the padding of the chair September can you hear him I've not known him to do this this is the first time he's done this sort of when I've been sitting in it anyway makes you wonder what he gets up to when I'm not here because sometimes I watch him and he just does nothing and then I go out or go to bed or whatever and I come back in and there's stuff all moved around there's balls there's like play balls of all around the place why is he doing this right now while I'm talking glad I cut his fingernails though because when his fingernails are long they can get caught right he's just decided he wants to come and cuddle with me can you believe it he's actually gone to sleep he's lying on my tummy I'm holding his head with my left hand just not holding it just you know it's not supporting it and just holding the rest of his body with my right hand and his eyes are practically closed he's just laying there Born asleep. Yeah, well, 30 seconds ago he was trying to rip the chair apart. Perhaps he was just after my attention. Now he's got it, he's happy. Just laying there. What is it? What are you up to, Andre? Hey, what's going on in your mind? Are you just happy that you've got a boring daddy? And when I talk, you just fall asleep. Yeah. It's times like this that I really love having him when he's gentle and all like loving, you know, just laying on me, not wiggling about, not trying to. Not trying to be naughty. You're a good boy, aren't you? So 
or August? September? Can't remember anything happening in September. October. Hmm. November? December. That's strange. I can't really think of anything that happened this year at all. There has been stuff, but I don't want to, you know, I want to sort of talk about some light-hearted things. No, I can't think of anything. Mind you, I've done made perhaps 160, 200, I don't know, recordings talking about what I've been up to. And that's like an hour each, so, so I probably spent about 160 hours maybe or more talking about what I've been up to this year and I can't think of even one thing off the top of my head how strange Yeah, weird. Ooh. Andre's waking up now. How you doing, baby? Are you alright? Give him daddy kisses. Oh, you're going to leave now, are you? Bye bye, I want to say goodbye to everyone. Alright, I'm going to go. Remember to be kind to yourself. Be gentle to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. So see you tomorrow. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care. Lots of love.